गुड मॉर्निंग पीपल वेलकम टू सक्सेस ट्री क्लासेस वेल वी आर स्टार्टिंग नाउ न्यूज पेपर मंथन वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ न्यूज पेपर मंथन विल कवर करंट अफेयर एनालिसिस मीन्स एनालिसिस ऑफ द न्यूज पेपर्स द इम्पोर्टेंट न्यूज पेपर्स एंड इम्पोर्टेंट आर्टिकल्स इन दैम फॉर एग्जाम्पल हिंदू इंडियन एक्सप्रेस बिजनेस स्टैंडर्ड मेंट दीज काइंड ऑफ द पेपर्स विल कवर Moreover, we'll do Yojana Economic Survey in, in the India Air Book of next year. And once we start in e- in the initial classes, we will try to build up a base, and we'll cover the major issues starting from the last say eight to ten months. So, for example, last December two thousand sixteen, fifteen, we'll start the basic issues, and this is just to build up the momentum because you cannot. Uh, compartmentalize the current affair issues they keeps on going there are certain major issues that have been there in the last couple of years and they are equally important right now as well so if you like our videos you hit like subscribe to our channel and comment on the comment section given below you can also uh, tell your opinion about what more things we can add in our videos or certain new major issues that you feel are important and if you skip them you can let us know in the comment section given below so here we go so uh, we'll start with the first issue today which is net neutrality and the recent trial ruling ensuring that net neutrality will prevail in india so the first thing that uh, we need to discuss going by the, the the template that we have discussed is what is net neutrality and what are the some of the key terms that are associated with net neutrality net neutrality broadly speaking is treating all the data that's going through internet uh, equally without discrimination simply put it's that it's an obligation on both the ip uh, isps the internet service providers and the government to have non discriminatory policy towards uh, the uh, movement of data along internet so that's the the definition of uh, net neutrality if you, if you get a question related to net neutrality make sure that you begin with explaining what the concept is and then uh, there is something called zero rating which is antithesis to the idea of net neutrality uh, at least in the context that we are discussing it now so zero rating is this policy that uh, many of the multinational companies wanted to implement and uh, not just in india but uh, in other economies as well wherein uh, they wanted to uh, partner with other companies by partner i mean take money from in in crude terms take money from uh, other uh, multinational companies in uh, internet uh, website platforms to provide the service free of cost to their users so they'll take money from the companies but will give those services through their uh, network for free to the users so uh, that's zero rating so what uh, facebook wanted to do was in a way a version of zero rating so it's not that that facebook program that started the the debate in india before that if you remember there was an issue with airtel 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 tried to implement various versions of zero rating in two context first they they wanted to uh, charge money uh, more money from the users of skype and uh, uh, whatsapp they are called over the top services because they are, uh, they are providing free telephony services right uh, through internet which would mean that it would it would incur losses to uh, companies like the airtel which base their business on telephony so they want to charge extra charges for the, the use of internet through these apps uh, that's one and second they they also wanted to uh, introduce something called airtel zero wherein they would do this uh, zero rating wherein they take money from uh, internet platforms other internet websites 
and provide those websites for free to the users. So it would mean that certain websites are uh, free for, for the users even without subscribing to an overall internet plan. So both of them run antithesis to the idea of non-discriminatory uh, movement of data in internet. Later, so uh, why are we discussing this? Because you know we are contextualizing the issue. Later, uh, Facebook came up with internet.org. Later, it's called uh, earlier it's called Free Basics. Now, internet.org, right? Yeah. So essentially, their idea was uh, the same, but they were not explicit about the money part that they would take money from. They they said that they would partner with uh, like-minded or you know. Uh, those organizations that want to use uh, this this platform of internet org and provide free access uh, to those who are partnering with them those uh, telephone services in uh, mobile mobile inter, uh, mobile uh, phone services that want to partner with them so reliance were initially interested and you you, you would know all this story right so then then the whole debate about whether this is uh, legally and ethically right started and then try released a consultation paper uh, uh, then uh, it was open to uh, feedback and a lot of uh, opinion against zero rating came and eventually try made its ruling that differential pricing that's a key term that you should use differential pr pricing is discriminatory and sh will not be allowed. The exact ruling would uh, say that no service provider can provide or charge discriminatory tariff for data services on the basis of content. No service provider shall enter into any agreement or contract by whatever n uh, name called with any person natural or legal that the effect of discriminatory tariff for data services being offered or charged by a service provider for the purpose of evading the prohibition in this regulation. And there is a punitive aspect to it also, wherein a violator would be charged 50,000 rupees per day, subject to a maximum of 50 lakh. But that's, that information is trivial, not really necessary. Uh, so differential pricing as it stands now is illegal. So that's the most important point that you need to remember. And the word differential pricing. So whenever asked about net neutrality, you should feature this word in your answer. Also, the uh, zero rating. That's another operative word. So like we do with most of our topics, positives and negatives of zero rating. Positives can be more access to internet. Second, rural penetration, which is one of the stated goals of our uh, Digital India mission. So this can help, this can supposedly help in achieving that goal. Then all the associated benefits like uh, access to online education like uh, MOOCs, multiple open online courses, telemedicine, etc. can be delivered effectively to the hitherto unpenetrable areas, especially in the hinterlands of India. So these are the, these are obvious also the benefits, but negatives in the opinion of many outweigh the positive. One is, it's discriminatory which is one of the most obvious negatives. Internet is an open platform. No state has exclusive control over it. And it should remain so for the benefit of the entire humankind. It's called the fifth domain, uh, like high seas, like outer space, like Antarctica, which belong to no one. Internet is a very good argument to keep internet as an open a fifth domain of 
uh, it's called uh, Ras Communis. Ras Communis is the word used to describe open spaces which are open to all and which is not susceptible or not allowed to be uh, appropriated by any state or any private organization or any individual. Uh, Global common is yes, which is associated term and which is often used. So, it's very similar. This term also can you can you you can interchangeably use it. If if you see some of the uh, international documents, they also use the word called common heritage of mankind. Yeah, common heritage of mankind uh, is used in the context of outer space and law of the sea. The high uh, in the context of high seas, heritage of mankind, CHM. So all these are, uh, if if you really go to the semantics of these these words, they, they are, there are negligible differences. But for the for our purposes, you can use it interchangeably. Okay, so that's one uh, negative, and the most obvious one. Can you point out a couple of more? None of this pens work. That comes on top of your mind. Mon eventually, uh, monopolies will develop, right? Now it will be free. And when the competition is eliminated, we will never know they would, they, when they start monopolizing or duopolizing the whole internet. Three, it, it's, it's against the policy of innovation and uh, startups. The startups with the negligible capital they have can never pay Facebook or Airtel to have access, this kind of access. So eventually, big MNCs would monopolize these platforms. And you can also argue that it's it's even though right to information in that sense is not a fundamental right. People have the right to uh, uh, to have equal access to all kinds of information in a platform, which is denied through free basics or similar zero rating policies. But a counter argument would be that it would stymie you know, uh, investment if you don't let uh, such new policies to come in India or for that matter anywhere else in the world. It companies won't be, big companies won't be interested in, in investing money in, in this kind of network. So that can be added as a point if you want to argue on those lines. That could be a positive point. That could be a positive point. Yeah. I said it, it's positive if you want to argue like that. Yeah. Basically, if you don't let uh, zero rating kind of policies happen in India, companies wouldn't be interested in investing more money in this sector. But basically, just the how do I say, web company won't be able to. Yeah, it's just one point that you can add. At the moment, yes, after the try rolling, uh, which says that uh, differential pricing is not allowed, which means that zero rating. Zero rating is differential pricing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, uh, even if the consumer is not paying differential pricing, uh, they are getting more money through some other ways to let some, a few access to this, their platform, like internet doors. So that's differential pricing. That's treating unequally. So, at the moment, we are living through Netflix. Yeah, right now, Netflix prevails in India because why? Because of the tri rolling. And that's why we are discussing it. That's the latest position. And the article is about tri rolling, but it, it contextualizes the issue and talk. There are two articles there. One, to, one is slightly older, which talks about the airtel issue and how internet.org came into being and all. 
and uh, the first article is about the trier rolling. Moving on, uh, again uh, sticking to our policy of bringing comparative perspective whenever possible. Uh, there is some information about how net neutrality is treated elsewhere in the world, first in United Nations, yeah, United States, where uh, the federal courts re, uh, recently ruled that net neutrality should provide, much, much to the chagrin of uh, Verizon and AT&T, which are the biggest uh, mobile companies in the US. In the EU, more, uh, EU parliament voted against net, net neutrality, which means differential pricing is possible in EU except for two countries, the Netherlands and Slovenia. Uh, it's there in your material. And uh, in China, China officially proclaims that they do not uh, differentially treat uh, data, but China blocks Facebook, China blocks, if you go to China, you would know that you can't access Google or uh, Facebook and some other, some other applications on your phone without using a proxy. So even though, so this this obligation, this net neutrality obligation is not just on ISP providers, but on governments as well. So China, even though openly embraces net neutrality, at least officially, uh, some of its policy run antithesis to the, the whole policy. So you can talk about US, uh, EU and China, depending on how you want to argue it. So. Uh, are you familiar with Digital India Scheme? We will discuss it later. Uh, uh, so, can you attempt that, uh, that question critical? We will we'll quickly, if you, if, if you can point out how you, you don't need to write down. Uh, after the first article, uh, there are two questions. One is a straightforward question, one is an analytical question. Explain, uh, critically examine the implication of the recent try ruling over net neutrality in achieving the objective of Digital India Scheme. So, tell me what points come to your mind. Okay, certainly as we have discussed, I think, uh, with the try ruling when Net neutrality has not been abrogated from the web portal. Uh, certainly, Digital India is more is more inclusive than the, and uh, it has the net the very idea of net neutrality. It has sort of strengthened the very objective of Digital India that would sort of enable it to reach to the far farthest areas. But if I if I were to argue that. Uh one of the positive things about uh, uh, zero rating is gi giving more access, uh, especially to the rural population, which is one of the stated goals of uh, Digital India. Would you still stick to your point that uh, the recent try rolling is helping uh, more more penetration, more more uh, towards the? There may be some precaution can be taken that okay, if even if try try has sort of uh, abrogated this. Zero rating concept. It should still seek measures to reduce the prices for to reduce the prices for internet. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, what you are trying to get at is is right. Yeah, but see, uh, I, I think you can write a better answer with some more uh, points, which will you will even really get. There are you should know some of the. Some of the schemes of digital India, or some of the finer aspects of digital India, like NFON, fiber optics network. See, the, uh, you can argue that this is not the only way to. What you should argue is uh, basically uh, with facts that this uh, uh, zero writing is not the only way to uh, ensure the stated goals of. Uh, digital uh, rural penetration you can have better infrastructure through a national fiber optic network then you can con uh, you, th there are computer literary literacy missions that our central government and even some of the state governments like the government of kerala that you can bring in some of those examples so all that would constitute uh, the, the effective implementation of the stated goals of digital india 
so rural penetration is only one aspect which can be achieved through other means uh, without breaking the the sacrosanct rule of net neutrality so you can argue on those lines so when we discuss nfo and digital uh, india mission uh, etc we will we'll try attempt this question so that you will have more points to substantiate some of these points sir uh, you mentioned about kerala some interesting mission yeah Uh, Kerala has a very robust uh, uh, computer literacy program uh, right from the school there is it's called uh, IT at school uh, IT, IT is information okay. technology at is the uh, at the rate of symbol IT at school so it's it's one it's um, it's being widely held as one of the most successful programs in terms of uh, computer literacy and you can uh, nfo in is national fiber optic network you can quickly go through the article and uh, tell me if you, if you have any doubts then so make sure that when you are reading it again uh, pick up points on those lines positive negatives and jot down and and when you are revising it just revise your notes rather than going back to the article so that, that would be sufficient yeah. next is one article last day we we talked about how how we can talk about uh, building synergies between schemes right we dis- when we when we discussed uh, interlinking Uh, we spoke about actually one of the students spoke about sagar mala how you can integrate some of the aims of sagar mala with interlinking similarly the, on those lines this article talks about how to build build synergies between uh, the aims of make in india national solar mission and skill india which are the, which are actually one of, one of the uh, some of the flagship programs of this government how how to build synergies between these three schemes make in india national solar mission jawaharlal nehru national solar mission and skill india first uh, make in india 
you would know that Make in India is one of our, uh, our Prime Minister's pet projects. Uh, we have, uh, uh, he had spent a lot of his energy, he sent his office energy on Make in India and make, he is promoting Make in India especially in, uh, in defense uh, and recently in textiles, in automobile manufacturing. Along that, along with that, uh, there, there's a lot of discussion on Make in India programs in terms of manufacturing equipment for renewable energy sources as well. So that's what this article is about. So uh, uh, National Solar Mission is the part of NAPCC, National Plan for uh, National Action Plan for Climate Change. You should remember this name, National Action Plan for Climate Change. Uh, it was introduced by the earlier government, Manmohan Singh UPA 2, uh, and it has eight component. And one of the component among those eight is Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission, which was taken up in a big way by this government, given Mod Modi's interest in uh, solar and how he went about spreading solar panels in, in uh, solar, solar projects in, in Gujarat. So. Uh, in the last budget, we have, we have stated goal of producing 175 gigawatts. Again, an important number to remember because you will get a lot of opportunity to reproduce this number by 2022. This is our stated goal that we would produce 175 gigawatts of electricity from renewable energy sources by 2022 and solar is a major component I guess out of this 7500 will be from solar or oh, that's a plan but right now our total capacity is just 28 gigawatt that is not just solar from all the renewable energy sources. The install capacity as it stands now is just 28. It really serves you well to see uh, um, some of the very basic facts like this one because I am using these facts, I am giving a stressing on this one. I re usually do not stress on numbers but some of the numbers you should really remember like you know that you can use in a lot of places like you know there's, there is bound to be a question on renewable energy or something on energy either in SA or in one of the GS papers. Similarly, you can use uh, in some of, you should try and buy hard some of India's rankings. You shouldn't do it this year, next year will new rank, when new rankings come, like you know, the ease of doing business ranking, global competitiveness index ranking, then uh, some of the facts from census, like the, the prevailing literacy rate, uh, infant mortality, maternity, uh, maternal mortality rate, just you know, Keep revising them, and and you can use it in a lot of sources. For example, uh, I was uh, sort of thinking about it. yesterday. Uh, there was this article about uh, how much money is being spent by the public in private hospitals versus government hospitals. So, are we supposed to remember those figures as well? For example, it was around eight hundred, eight hundred, or eight thousand crores in fact. Yeah, I, 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 the, I think the news is about the fact that we are spending eight, uh, eight times more on an average. Yeah, exactly. uh, so remember this eight times, which is, which is yeah, the exact figures don't matter. But uh, yeah, as much as you can remember, uh, you do that when you're doing your economic survey next year. Yeah, most of the fig uh, these figures, uh, especially on MMR, all, all the indicators, social indicators, you will get from uh, economic survey. Other than that, don't really stress on. I'm, not trying to say that you should pick up all the all the facts and figures, but you know it really serves you well to to pepper your answer with some of the fa uh, facts because it really shows that you, you know the issue, right? Yeah. So Only uh, to that. Uh, uh, if we are preparing for next year, uh, are we supposed to do economic survey for this year? Not really, not really, not yeah, really. But but it really helps if you get time, just go through it. Yeah, but I not necessary, in my opinion. For the essays, which would be conducted around. A uh, test series, where? For example, in December, January, there would be various test series. Yeah, yeah, if you plan to join them, yeah, they would ask questions. 
economic See, from economic survey, but economic survey is you not know, a standalone document. There are things that are covered in economic survey that will be covered in newspapers as well. Some of the articles that we are doing as well. And I think Nitin would deal with some of the aspects of uh, economic survey uh, in, in, in the course of our lectures as well. I am guessing, yeah. So, because he, 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 t he would deal with all the economy related stuff. So. so, yeah, if you get time, go through it. But uh, don't make it a priority. Yeah. And uh, there, are, there are some websites like I think I have, I have seen uh, this, this website called Civils Daily. Okay. Yeah. It, it has a good summary of uh, uh, this year's economic survey. So rather than just reading economic survey, the text, I think you can go through. And, and it has a lot of extra information that are associated with some of the concepts discussed in economic survey. So I think I, I, it's not comprehensive. Some of the chapters are missing, but you can still go through it. And I think for now, for next year, that's more than enough. And again, another problem is you would get less time for doing next economic survey because the exam comes in June, right? So yeah, yeah, it makes sense to go through some of the fundamental concepts that are discussed in this years. But don't spend a lot of time on it again. <laughs> yeah. So uh, NAPCC, remember the name, and uh, go and uh, go, go back home and look at the eight schemes that are under this, which are really important because you, again, you can use it in a, in a lot of sources. There is national uh, plan, uh, action plan for uh, uh, a national uh, solar mission. Then there is uh, Himalayan, uh, uh, Himalayan ecosystem. Then there is national green uh, green India. Uh, then there is sustainable agriculture. All these are a lot of element uh, sub programs in this national action plan for climate change. And the, one of the most important is national solar mission. So national solar mission is there. So uh, so this is our target. How do we achieve that? By creating the necessary infrastructure. Creation of necessary infrastructure would mean that creation of more jobs. Not just any job, but skilled jobs because it uh, manufacture of solar panels and associated instruments would, would involve certain level of skill to do that, right? So you have to first skill people because we have enough number of people in India and we are right now uh, in an advantageous position and it's usually called uh, what is it uh, demographic dividend uh, uh, more than 50 percentage of our population is between uh, 15, uh, 15 to uh, 50 which would mean that uh, there, there are a lot of labor able labor available it's called demographic dividend you can use that word uh, I'm sure you know that and we have to, uh, the problem is, but uh, not even uh, 3 percentage of this entire uh, labor available is skilled. Whereas if you look at uh, countries like South Korea, more than 80 percentage of their available uh, skilled labor, uh, labor is, is trained in some way, in one or other skills. So trained labor uh, is, is, is abysmal in Indian situation. So you can bring in South Korean example or Germany for that matter, where in almost 80 to 90 percentage of the labor force is skilled. So what we require is skilled labor. And we have uh, now created a separate ministry for skill development and entrepreneurship. This is a separate ministry now. We have a new uh, policy, this in, uh, 2015 policy on national skill development. And we have schemes like uh, Pradhan Mantri Gram Kaushal Yojana. Uh, Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, etc., uh, which aims to materialize some of the stated aims of these policies. So, uh, so we've talked about Solar Mission, Skill India. Now, MII. Again, uh, MII is one of the flagship programs of this government, and the idea is to build synergies, create skill people first in manufacturing solar uh, panels etc and manufacture the solar uh, we are importing a lot from china nowadays make india self reliant on mii through mii so when asked about, you can use this this kind of information in a lot of a lot of places and always think in this this cross scheme perspective we all cross scheme in the sense you know use 
the stated aims of one scheme to to buttress an argument when you talk about another scheme here if the question is, is about national solar mission you can talk about this these points so the interdisciplinarity that your university tells you ask you to do when you are doing research you can do do a version of it here as well so quick, quickly go through that article uh, okay. and one more point is international solar alliance again you can bring in an international perspective to it uh, it is international solar alliance was announced uh, in the context of the recent paris agreement uh, and uh, it, under it's an indian initiative to build a network of countries 121 countries which are getting abundant sunshine which would mean that they are either in the either near the in the other two sides of equator or you know below tropic of cancer and capricorn so those countries uh, a loose network of those countries with an aim to build capacity among each other and technology transfer uh, and uh, and skilling etc so the synergies of that program also can be introduced to improve national solar mission so remember international solar alliance it's an indian initiative uh, but it's an international organization of sorts and it's temporarily based in india as its headquarters is in gurgaon uh, but uh, later it, i think it will have a permanent secretary etc so also talk about isa Yeah, I suggest you wiki read all these all these schemes, and just just keep it there. As in, don't try to by heart and all. Just get an idea of what they are. next we are discussing gm crops why are we discussing gm crops because very recently G, uh, gm mustard was uh, there was an application to commercialize the product uh, the cultivation of gm mustard which was uh, not allowed by the geac geac G, uh, genetic engineering appraisal committee is the gac is the authority which decides on the on the field the the, the applications on field trial and commercialization of a particular gm crop gac is under ministry of environment and forest a prelims to be a you want there has been uh, a proposal in fact a draft bill on biotechnology regulatory authority of india to create a new body to to do the same functions that g is you doing now but uh, the bill was lapsed a couple of years back so and it's never brought back uh, that that point is there in the in the material so what is gm crop of course genetically modified crop when a new gene or a set of genes are artificially inserted into a plant with a view to improve cultivation or help improve its resistance towards a particular disease or a set of diseases or drought it's called gm crop uh, in fact uh, most of the crops that we are commercially cultivating 
are gm crops in a way but now that now the only difference between the so called gm crops and the other crops is that there is an artificial uh, insertion of a gene earlier we used to cross breed and 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 that way selectively uh, select a few genes those traits in a way that that is also uh, modifying the genes right and making it more cultivable etc so the wild varieties are through a very systematized pattern uh, cross bred and uh, improved upon so the gm that we are talking about here is artificial insertion of a gene through latest biotechnology methods so how it helps it's obvious higher yields reduced farm cost increased profit uh, improvement in health and environment that's debatable then again resistance uh, drought especially in the context of climate change so those are the obvious benefits what are the problems before that uh, i'm sure you know that uh, the only commercially allowed crop uh, genetically modified crop in india is bt cotton bt cotton it's called bt cotton so it's a very crucial information that you should remember it's called b b t t is small letter cotton and most of the cotton that we cultivate now in india is bt cotton it's a kind of cotton it's a kind of it's a, it's a gen, uh, bt is bacillus thuringiensis it's a bacteria actually uh, which uh, the, uh, a gene of this bacteria bacti uh, bacillus thuringios thuringios so oh, yeah is taken out and is implanted in the cotton to give it resistant to certain kind of pest and uh, this is uh, widely grown in maharashtra and other parts of the country in fact i think more than 70% of the entire co- cotton cultivation is bt cotton in india so there are some as- issues associated with that so we'll discuss we have discussed the positives that uh, we'll discuss the negatives one is the uh, uh, effect on health there are a lot of studies which says that gm crops are harmful to your health it it's carcinogenic some of them are carcinogenic supposedly carcinogenic in any case you can argue that not enough studies have done to fully study its effect on health so that, that that's that's a safe conclusion that you can use then its effect on environment one problem would be that the risk of contaminating indigenous and wild varieties so uh, is even if you grow gm crops there will be other plants that are uh, that are nearby of same species or similar species and there is a good chance that the pollination will happen or uh, seed dispersal will happen and some sort of uh, intermixing will happen between these plants and uh, we really don't know how they that will affect the the biodiversity of the country so the uh, the risk of contaminating other indigenous and uh, wild varieties is can be one point second is the point associated with monoculture our cropping will w- uh, become monoculture same kind of plants everywhere which is against the biodiversity which is very essential to keep life alive in earth three is uh, some of these uh, pests can develop resistance to the uh, to, to the uh, introduced gene so it would make this this gm especially those those G, uh, genes that are incorporated to resist pest redundant eventually they would develop resistance towards it that that can be added as a negative point that's not really a negative negative point but that's 
there can be add, uh, added resistance. And uh, it can also kill non target organisms. The same argument that goes with pesticides, it not just kills the pest, it also kills other animals and uh, other organisms that are beneficial. So, that can that argument can be written here as well. Then another issue associated is labeling. Since we are not cultivating any any uh, any food crops in India so far, it doesn't really go uh, true for our, our indigenously manufactured food food items. But what about the uh, the ones that are imported? Because uh, especially from the US, where GM crops, including including GM corn, is widely cultivated. So does the consumer have a right to know that he or she is consuming uh, uh, a GM crop? Of course, yes. So, labeling is an issue. So, uh, there are no strict rules about it and there are calls for making labeling strict to let the consumer know what kind of food he is eating. So, labeling is an associated issue. We will discuss, we are discussing it with negatives because it's, it is a negative connotation to it. Okay, these are the issues. So, uh, so far we have Bt cotton which is widely grown. Then there was a proposal some years back uh, to uh, uh, try Bt brinjal. Field trials were conducted and it was widely opposed and there was eventually a moratorium. And now the issue is about Bt mustard. So. Uh, so, uh, all of them are uh, have uh, this company called Monsanto, you must have heard, have some role in all of this. Bt cotton is sold by Monsanto, the rest of the two crops are, are also developed by Monsanto or its subsidiary organs. So, what is the solution, the way ahead? GM crops are subject to intense regular should be subject to uh, regulatory scrutiny. Then again, uh, this point that uh, biotechnology regulatory authority should be should be established to give permanence to this this body that regulates field trials and commercialization. Then you can also say that clear guidelines as to free field trials and commercialization of food crops should be should be implemented. The, then again, GM crops are not a you can say uh, are not a panacea for uh, food shortage or food security. Uh, we should concentrate on high intensive agriculture and traditional agriculture and organic agriculture etc. So, those we will deal with more, more of the agriculture programs like Parampara Krishi Vikas Yojana which, which is announced in the last budget uh, etc. And so, you can bring in all those points as solution. So, so GM crops are not the, not the single answer to, to all the problems we have. And on the, on the positive, yeah, on the positives we can also mention fortified f food. Like there was this, there is this talk about golden rice, which is essentially vitamin A fortified rice. So India is a country where malnutrition is wide uh, prevalent. So fortified food can be a solution. And golden rice is nothing but introducing uh, vitamin A genetically, a gene which manufactures vitamin A in rice through genetic engineering. Golden rice, vitamin A, beta carotene. Okay, are you clear?
So next we will discuss civil aviation policy. There are a lot of policies that came in the last six or seven months. National, there is a national draft health policy that's, that was announced. There is a national draft education policy. Again, that's that's not coming to being. It's announced. I say it's out. The draft is out. Then there is national electronic policy, uh, which is finalized, and this uh, this national avi uh, aviation policy. So we'll deal with all of them in our classes. But uh, let's start with national aviation policy. Aviation is so much in use for a lot of reasons, and one of it is national aviation policy. So national aviation policy, the stated goal is. We can remember it through this acronym, 3C plus I. Competition, consumers, connectivity, those are the three C's and investment, both from domestic and foreign investors. And government has a target of increasing domestic traffic by four folds. Again, by 2022. So, in national uh, missions on renewable energy, also it's 2022 the target year. Here also it's 2022. So, what are the main features of this policy? One is the dilution of 5 by 20 rule. Earlier, an airline operator with five years experience. And at least 20 aircraft dedicated for domestic uh, travel would be allowed to run their international airline business. Now it is diluted. Now it is 0 by 20 rule. No experience is necessary. At least 20 percentage of uh, 20 aircrafts or 20 percentage of the total fleet, whichever is higher should be dedicated for domestic in order for them to qualify for international business. So from 5 by 20 to 20, uh, 0 by 20, that is one feature. So it said that some of the new players like Vistara and AirAsia would benefit more than older players like Jet Airways and Indigo and naturally Jet Airways and Indigo, uh, they are not happy with this, this dilution. Then regional connectivity scheme, again another part of it which, which was really highlighted in news, regional connectivity scheme, which said that all those distances which can be covered in, in one hour will be charged not more than 2500 rupees. The, so uh, that is a game changer. And then this is to uh, this policy is to serve uh, either to unserved airports, especially in the northeast. So uh, it's done through subsidi cross subsidies. So uh, those those who are traveling in in the more frequented routes would have to shell out a small levy, uh, which would cross subsidize uh, the lesser money that. Northeast people or people who are traveling to less, less travel airports would pay. Then uh, about infrastructure, so uh, we talked about uh, f uh, 5 by 20, the dilution of which would result in 0 by 20 rule. Then uh, regional connectivity scheme, third is Norfolk and Greenfields airport. So those redundant airports those which were used earlier by British or by the army would be revamped and new airports that is green you know the difference between greenfield and brownfield. Uh, greenfield projects are new projects that is constructed right from the scratch whereas brownfield is usually associated with acquisition. So a greenfield FDI would mean that the FDI would start a business right from the scratch like building a factory whereas a brownfield FDI would be an acquisition, an existing company would be acquired by a foreign company. That's 
so greenfield i'm uh, that's a different context but the word greenfield and brownfield is i'm just trying to explain it so a lot of um, uh, greenfield airports will be constructed and also uh, the old airports all unused uh, air strips and airports will be will be revamped also so that's another one then open skies agreement with sar countries so open skies agreement would mean that the countries can see it's a reciprocal agreement which means that you know the the, the the courtesy that i extend to you should be extended to me as well that's the reciprocity uh, that would say that uh, that would uh, open sky means to let you uh, to let the other country have as many flights as as it, it deems necessary to that country and vice versa so basically open skies you can fly as many times and as many aircraft as you want extension of that scheme to sar countries and also to those countries which are away from india by more than 5000 kilometers which would exclude gulf and uh, most of the parts of eu so basically uh, uh, western europe and the us so that's another this thing and uh, now gra- uh, ground handling operations can be handled by the uh, aircraft themselves earlier it used to uh, there was a mandate that it should be given to separate company through tenders etc now the the aircraft themselves can handle ground handling the the good thing about the, uh, that is since it will be seamlessly coordinated because it's the same company that does it the turnaround time that is the time of arrival and the and the, the difference between the time of arrival and the difference bet- and and the next flight and the same flight will go back to another place right that can be consistently reduced because of the seamless integration of their of the ground staff and the aircraft so now uh, indigo and spicejet and the likes can do it on their own the ground handling so these are the major points uh, so what are the negatives what are, there are very few negatives that are been discussed one is it's silent about the fdi second uh, it's silent about the formation of an independent civil aviation authority now the civil aviation authority is under the ministry of uh, aviation right aviation ministry there was talks about creating an independent impartial authority and it's it, it, it's also silent it, it, it's very important in the context of air india uh, air india is still being afloat with the public money right so so if there is a independent authority such kind of cross subsidization with public money wouldn't happen so that so the policies negative points are silence about some of the very critical aspect fdi the fate of air india then then again it talks about the the open uh, that point is not here i was reading another article it talks about the the redundancy of this open sky agreement it the, the article says that some of the some of the uh, open slots are unused especially in eu and all we don't have enough aircraft that goes to eu so even the, the allowed slots are not used so why why should we have this such kind of open policy policies yeah it will hurt more hurt us more because they will be allowed to let as many because they have capacity and a lot of number of private players as well but we don't so uh, that that also can be a negative point so uh, if at all it's been asked it will be direct question about civil aviation so remember its important points and at least two or three criticisms and uh, especially remember this this 3c plus i you can start with that the stated goal so um that's all uh, from the material that we are discussing today